Minister in the presidency, Mondlin Gungubele, says last night's hostage drama was completely uncalled for. 56 members of the Liberation Struggle War veterans, including seven women, have been arrested on kidnapping charges. Gungubele, the defense minister and head deputy, were held hostage at the St. George's Hotel outside Pretoria. ANCA reporter Mangoba Mkunu was at the briefing that was held uh, by the ministers earlier. Mangoba, thanks for making time. So concerns around safety and security in the country were raised during that briefing. What did the minister have to say? Well, Clement, the minister is seemingly downplaying uh, the events that happened at St. George's last night. Of course, uh, they agree, Clement, that uh, they were held against their will by those members of uh, the Liberation Struggle War veterans for three hours at that conference centre. And of course, at this particular point, uh, they're saying that, you know, uh, they're not ashamed at all. And, uh, you know, they're not embarrassed about what happened last night, given the fact that this was not the first time that they'd actually engaged these war veterans on some of their concerns. Of course, these are some of the issues that have been raised before to mm. this particular task team that was appointed by President Cyril Ramaphosa. So uh, the minister in the presidency, Mondi Kungubele, saying that, you know, when they went into that meeting, they didn't have any suspicions uh, because they'd had meetings before. So what happened last night, uh, they at no point felt that they were threatened or that their lives were in danger. But of course, he says that uh, the action by those military veterans was uncalled for. It was unacceptable and says that uh, it should be condemned in the strongest sense. But take a listen to what he had to say on this. PTT has already held three provincial consultations in Gauteng, Eastern Cape and Limpopo with a visit to other provinces in the advanced planning stages. These sessions were led by the Deputy President and afforded veterans an, an opportunity to air their concerns, but also to receive feedback on the manner in which their grievances have been taken up by the PTT. We are able to confirm, ladies and gentlemen, that our understanding is that all the parties were appreciative on the work that has been done to date. A lot has been put in place with clear timelines on what is being done and still to be done. We can confirm some of the work done to date, which includes, amongst others, the following. A draft bill to amend the Military Veterans Act to deal with some of the discrepancies in the bill, such as the definition of the military veteran, provisions of health care benefits, to the dependence of the military veterans and means test criteria. Second bullet, the review of the Special Pensions Act, the development of the pensions policy, work around the presidential patents and expungement of criminal records on some of the members, social relief of distress and the housing for their members involvement of some of the members in the social economic activities, repatriation of the remains of the military and the erection of the monuments in the host countries, and memorization, memorization of fallen heroes. So, Mangoba, this is not the first time these veterans are raising these issues. So why have they not been addressed? And, I mean, we've got the Department of Military Veterans. There's money that is budgeted to care for military veterans. What is the Defence Minister saying? Well, certainly, Clement, it's not the first time that we're hearing of these issues. We've seen, uh, you know, similar meetings that have been held between uh, the ministers uh, with some of these uh, uh, MK vets on these particular issues. And you recall that in this particular meeting that was called, one of the issues that they were raising was around the issue of reparations. Uh, they are wanting to be paid 4.2 million rand uh, for having been part of the liberation struggle. This is one of the issues. There are also issues of social benefits, issues of housing, which I think the minister also touched on it, that bite that we just played now. And of course, the Minister of Defense saying that they are willing to listen to some of these concerns. They are aware of these concerns. But of course, she says that the manner in which uh, that meeting transpired and the events that took place yesterday, of course, were not acceptable because their rights were simply violated. She, however, conceded, Clement, that these are long-standing issues and that her department
department who is looking, in fact, at some of these issues, at solving some of these issues. But, mm. of course, she says that uh, she'll also launch an investigation, a probe, to look into exactly how some of the funds have been spent that have been meant to be looking into the particular issues uh, that relate to military veterans. But, uh, of course, she praised the police for their handling of this particular matter. Take a listen to what she had to say on this. I hope that at no stage will we go overboard and make sure that a, a, a minister goes into a meeting with four or five bodyguards. It is not necessary. And to answer that question, yes, uh, our protectors were there. No, they were not tempted to beat up anybody. They knew that we could hold our own because what was taking place within those closed doors was people talking, was people um, differing on, on issues, was people now and then breaking into songs and joining each other. It wasn't a bloodbath. It was people saying, but you are not understanding our point of view, and us saying, but we want to really understand your point of view. Let us meet, but you are refusing us to discuss this matter here because you are demanding that we physically bring a deputy president to a meeting. 